laws passed to prevent student bullying? Uh, I think that it's just a part of growing up, and I think that all bullies are not going to come and shoot up the school. I would say it probably depends on to the degree that they're bullying. Uh, maybe if they are making threats to come to school and do violent acts. I don't know if it's necessarily uh, a legal issue. I mean, anytime someone picks on somebody else, you know, that's infringing on their rights. It's part of growing up as a child. Puts people on rank and, of course, uh, develops your personality. Let me get Warren in here. I think we've straightened out our audio problems. Uh, James likes uh, this law uh, proposal. Uh, Warren, what do you think of it? I think we all oppose bullying, but laws are not the solution to bullying. We have to really remember bullying was fine in a day when we were basically saying to our kids, uh, the purpose of bullying was to sort of make kids tough. The purpose of making kids tough especially was, was making boys tough. The purpose of making boys tough was to prepare them to be able to go to war, to be disposables. So they had to be able to handle things like criticism in order to become successful, or bullying in order to be able to prepare for war, just like football. Today, we, if we want to change boys so that they're sensitive as well as tough, we've really got to get into our school systems and begin to start um, getting boys in particular to talk about their feelings at a very early age to make sure that we're not just rewarding the football players and asking uh, that the that is not just rewarding the tough men and then saying and then punishing the boys for being the same tough boys that we're rewarding them for on the one hand we're giving boys very mixed messages today if we make laws against bullying what we're basically going to be doing is having a a whole plethora of laws saying is somebody bullied when they're left out of a group or there's somebody bullied when eyes are sort of looking rolling at, at comments that they make uh, we're going to be getting into things that are symptoms to problems the school system needs to be dealing with the underlying problem not the symptom let me go back to my kids uh, Valerie you're uh, 15 mm -hmm. I would just like to say this whole law is like banning fire extinguishers in hopes that we'll never have fire I was made fun of just a little bit as um, a kid, you know, about my name, about how I looked, how I didn't. And if I never would have coped with that in elementary school, later on, now that I'm in high school, I never would have known how to deal with it. So a lot's being said about the bullies, but a lot can be said for the victims. I mean, yeah, to a certain extent, you know, if we're all coddled in school, when we get out of school and we're out in the real world, we'll still have to face those same issues. So if we don't know how to deal with them now, it just can be a lot harder later when we have no one to talk to about it. Yeah. But I'm not sure that, I mean, some of the things that, that you know, this goes beyond name calling and, and that sort of thing. I, I, I'm not sure that, that most of the kids, when they get out in the real world, would have to deal with some of the incidents uh, of bullying that that kids today have had to deal with whether it's you know uh, you know being shoved into a locker or a toilet or I mean these are physically assault you know these are assault kind of things which is way different than just coping with you know name calling or or being picked on because you're different don't you think um, Bobby bully, bullying rises to different levels at different stages of life. Um, somebody might have a false accusation of child abuse or uh, rape or a false accusation of, um, of, of jipping on taxes or um, maybe we're hassled in different ways throughout, throughout our life and we have to learn how to be able to handle things that are that are that are not comfortable that comes our way and there's no better place to handle it when we're when we're young and when we have both a parents parents and a school system to sort of turn to to sort of discuss the meaning of those things with with each other but I think if we aren't having in our classrooms as part of our required curriculum an opportunity to be able to to bring people kids forth and discuss what's happening and recognize that I, I personally have never met a secure bully so stuff is going on with the bully that needs to be uncovered and also with the person that is bullied. And, and, that, and that's part of what I think we need to put more focus on. We've taught a whole generation of people computer language, but not language of, of feelings and communications, and especially not with boys. Bobby, uh -huh. I think we're putting, out, Bobby, we're putting a lot of attention on we have to get used to this, we have to get over it. Bully is part of the cultural patent. That is part of the problem that is causing American schools to be prisoners of their own achievements. We have let the bully engage in a reign of terror for far too long. And it's such laws as are being proposed in Colorado that will give other students, the majority of the students are good students, a measure of respite or breathing room so they can at least graduate. And what's happened is too many bullies are turning our schoolyards into graveyards and too many other students are going to school to be executed, not educated. That is I not okay. It is unpatriotic. And we need to protect the majority of good students. I got it. 
I got I got a break. I'm sorry. I got a break. We'll continue here in just a second. Whether you're any California student accused of bullying or bringing a weapon to school will be made to visit a mortuary and watch a post-mortem exam. The program, supported by the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, tries to show students the reality of violence, injury, and death. I was saying, we're getting really interesting emails today, and um, it obviously uh, depends on your perspective as to whether or not you were the one bullied or you were the one doing the bullying. That um, it's the, the, the empathy for each other's position is not there even as adults. Robert in Toronto says uh, some of us were forced to put up with so-called teasing throughout our school life and it isn't easy to excel when you're treated like garbage. Telling us that we should have put up with it not only damages the self-esteem of the victims by implying they're wimps but encourages the bully to bully some more by suggesting that bullying is normal. Yeah, I think the issue Bobby is not putting up with it. The issue is getting the, all these kids are classmates. You get them in the same classroom and you start talking with them about what's going on in their lives, lives and you find very similar things happening. Everybody's insecure. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants, feels, wants to feel they're special. Nobody's feeling this way. Not the bully, not the, not the person that's being bullied. You start getting them to talk to each other and they start humanizing each other. When they start humanizing each other, it's much harder to bully. You objectify what reject, what you, when you feel rejected, you turn the rest of the world into an object because it hurts less to be rejected by an object than it does to be rejected by full human beings. It's the de-objectification that has to happen in the classroom so kids realize that, that, that they're all basically dealing with the same thing. They're just compensating in different ways, one by becoming a hero, one by becoming a bully, one by becoming um, even getting attention by um, well, complaining. Uh, as if teachers don't have but, enough to do, though, in, <laughs> in the classroom. <laughs> um, I'm wondering, should this really start in the home? Before Bobby, it gets I, to the classroom? Bobby, it, it really should. There are no such thing as unsafe schools, only unsafe homes. Schools are only as safe as the homes they're forced to serve. Public schools have to serve every home in their defined attendant zone. I agree with Warren. In fact, of the 103 students that I interviewed who were incarcerated for murder, the kids that I talked to for my book, Jack and Jill, Why They Kill, six of them broke down and cried. And they told me, and it's just like Warren said, it's easier to talk to a human being. They actually fessed up and told me how they felt abandoned. They felt isolated. They felt alienated. There was no fixed positive role model in their homes. And I have a chapter in my book, Jack and Joe, Why They Kill, chapter six called Bullies, colon, Campus Stalkers, because that's how I view bullies. That's what the 103 kids I interviewed in prison for murder viewed themselves after the fact that they actually stalked others on campus, preyed upon others in a predatory manner because they were so grossly unhappy with their tattered lives. So I think we really need to see bullies as, as kids, certainly who can be rehabilitated, and but as kids who can predicate lots of harm as we saw in Columbine. Columbine High School is the Pearl Harbor of school violence. We've never had such a tragedy in American life. And right now, we have the greatest opportunity to rescue our children from themselves since the horrid period of child slavery exploitation in the coal mines and sweatshops of America a hundred years ago. Kids have never been such at greater risk as they are right now and they're crying out to be rescued. I mean, and bullies really need to be targeted and rehabilitated and these laws will help get that job done. Let me, it's, it's, it, go ahead Bobby. Well, I was just going to jump in real quickly and take a phone call from uh, sure. Mer Meredith from Kentucky who's been hanging on. Go ahead Meredith. Yes, I just wanted to say that I think the media has a huge effect as to who gets bullied. Um, in the media, we see these beautiful, physically beautiful people glorified, and the smart people are never glorified. And you see who gets bullied, who gets picked on. It's always the smart kids, the kids that aren't, you know, up to the standard of beauty that's perpetuated through the media. And I think the media needs to take a little responsibility for what's going on in our schools. Bobby, it gets back to what you were asking two minutes ago about teachers' responsibilities. What teachers need to do is literally rip the headlines off the newspaper and use that as grist in their educational meals. They need to tell kids, we need to start talking about the social phenomena that are occurring all around us because you guys are capsizing in your own emotional seas. You can't manage your anger. You are looking at each other as though 
you're in a Darwinian period where the strong, only the strong survive. Teachers need to spend 15 minutes of every day asking kids to process out the violence around them. It's okay to study the state frameworks for mathematics, history, social science. It's okay to study the Civil War, but Bobby, our kids are in a civil war from which they need to be rescued. Let me, our let me kids, get Warren in here uh, quickly. So yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, yes, basi yeah. basically we've, we, we have had a, um, we taught a whole generation of people computer language and we're saying that you know, the teachers have enough to do, we may have to bring in specialists to get people to every, every student from when she or he is in kindergarten right up through um, high school is needing to be in a class where, there, where there's connection about talking about what's going on in their lives. Many, many, if, we, if we look at Andy Williams' situation, for example, here he was dating a girl and he broke up with her. He was experiencing rejection. He's, he's moved 3,000 miles away from his, par his parents. He barely had communication with his mother. He's experiencing, he's in a new school system. He's being bullied. All, almost every kid in the class has problems like this and when they have an opportunity to discuss them, they're highly unlikely to start um, acting out in the way that Andy Williams acted out. I agree, Bobby. Wait, Bobby, I, can, I, I, give you, can yeah. I give you a statistic? Let me, let me, when we come back, okay, because okay. I'm pushing the break again. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes.